It is said that during its evolution, the so-called aspirate split into two parts, which later became something like a raised capital L and a raised inverted capital L. These eventually morphed into the rough breathing mark, which looks like a raised inverted comma, and the smooth breathing mark, respectively. This video asks a question about the pronunciation of the rough breathing mark, gives a straightforward answer, and explains why. The question is, is the rough breathing mark in New Testament Greek pronounced? In other words, should the rough breathing mark over words such as o, i, idor, utos be pronounced something like ho, hi, hidor, hutos? The answer is simple. There is no indication whatsoever that the aspirate was used in the New Testament writings. Look, for example, at a folio from one of the oldest New Testament manuscripts. On the left is a folio from Papyrus 46, one of the oldest extant New Testament manuscripts from A.D. 175 to 225. The text is from Colossians 1, 16 to 24. On the right is the same text in modern type. Words with a rough breathing mark are shown in red. You can see the same words on the folio underlined in red as well. Notice that no aspiration symbol on the folio is found that corresponds to the rough breathing mark in the modern type. But let's now look at the bigger picture regarding the aspirate. In French, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish, the H is silent, its presence in writing being but the relic of a distant past. So just because the H is written in French, in Italian, in Portuguese, or in Spanish, it does not mean that it is also pronounced. Something of the sort happened in Greek. By the beginning of the Classical Greek period, the aspirate was already a silent relic of the past. The numerous Attic speech forms affected by the aspirate had long been molded and standardized. Take, for instance, the effects of aspiration on elision forms. One type of elision concerns the syllabic prepositions whose second syllable begins with p, p, or taf, t, like epi, kata. When such a preposition is followed by a word that takes a rough breathing mark, its final vowel is elided, while the exposed plosives p and t change into their homorganic fricatives f and th, respectively. Look at column 1. Here we have the full forms of the preposition epi and kata each followed by a word that begins with a vowel that takes the rough breathing mark or aspirate. Shown in column 2 is what technically happens during elision, and that is the final vowel of the preposition drops, allowing p and t to meet the aspirated syllable of the next word. Column 3. The result of the elision is that the bilabial plosive p, p 
of the preposition epi turns into labial dental fricative fi, f, while the dental plosive taf, t, of the preposition kata turns into the dental fricative theta, th, like th. Today, these are the Elysian forms you will find in ancient Greek textbooks, in a Greek New Testament, and in today's formal Neo-Hellenic Katharevusa. These and numerous other Elysians were formed and standardized in pre-classical times before reaching classical Greek. And in the fourth column, you see the same two pairs of words in compound form as they are spelled in daily Neo-Hellenic or Dimotiki. Notably, numerous compound forms in today's Neo-Hellenic are traceable diachronically to New Testament times, to classical Greek, and beyond. Again, such Elysian forms, molded and normalized in pre-classical antiquity, eventually reached classical Athens, just the way many of them eventually reached Neo-Hellenic and are still in use to this very day. Let's now look specifically at the status of the aspirate during the classical Attic period. In mid-5th century BC, end of the Greco-Persian Wars, Attic versifiers began to borrow the Ionic vowel eta e as a compensatory symbol in certain accented and therefore lengthened syllables in metered verse. The vowel eta looked identical with the aspirate symbol. But Attic versifiers saw no conflict, for the old aspirate was defunct and functionless. But soon Ita crept into Attic writing as well. Plato observes that whereas the ancients wrote Imera day with a yota, the Athenians of his day would switch from Imera with yota to Imera with epsilon yota e and now to eta e. And so when the Athenians ratified the 24 letter Ionic alphabet in 403 BC as their own new Attic alphabet, the vowel eta became officially an alphabet letter, while mute aspirate was left out. Again, the point is that Attic would not have borrowed the vowel eta if the identical aspirate symbol had any meaningful function. It follows that only the absence of aspiration could have freed the symbol of the aspirate for a new application, that of the vowel eta. That the aspirate was silent and no longer symbolized rough breathing in classical Greek is evidenced by the fact that in many classical Attic decrees and other inscriptions, the aspirate was used erratically. It was either missing or misplaced. Let's examine some examples. On the left of this page, we see an Attic decree from the 5th century BC. On the right is the same decree transcribed letter for letter, highlighted in green both on the inscription on the left 
and on its transcription on the right are words that are aspirated and spelled in red on the right or underlined in red on the left are words that are not aspirated but should have been aspirated. Also, the upper three green arrows point to the same aspirated word. The bottom green arrow points to exactly the same word, but which is not aspirated this time. At the top of this page, we see a section of an Attic decree from the 5th century BC. Three aspirated words are underlined in green. The word underlined in red should have been aspirated, but is not. On the lower part of the page, you see another Attic decree from the 5th century BC. On line 5 is the word for priestess, Ierea, dative singular which begins with the aspirate symbol. On line 10, only five lines later, the same word is shown in partial form, but without the aspirate. Again, the presence or absence of the aspirate in Attic Greek makes no difference in meaning or pronunciation. Here's another Attic decree inscribed in the 5th century BC. The five words underlined in green are aspirated, but the three words underlined in red should have been aspirated, but are not. This inscription contains numerous misapplications of the aspirate. The indiscriminate use and non-use of the aspirate here shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that its presence or absence makes no difference in pronunciation or meaning. These and many other such spelling monstrosities involving the Attic aspirate betray the non-phonetic value of this historical relic during the Classical Attic period. This Attic decree was inscribed in 303-302 BC, or at the very end of the Classical period. The four words underlined in red would have normally been aspirated earlier in the classical period, but are shown here without the aspirate. Between the adoption of the Ionic alphabet in 403 BC and the end of the classical period, the aspirate virtually disappeared. Let's now see what happened in a relatively short time thereafter. The invention of breathing marks and other diacritics, accent marks, comma, period, apostrophe, hyphen, is credited to grammarian Aristophanes of Byzantium. After scanty use for centuries and following a reform of accentuation undertaken by grammarian Theodosius of Alexandria around A.D. 400, these marks reappeared and further evolved, with the aspirate eventually becoming like a raised inverted comma. This systematic application of diacritics to manuscript texts, having met with favor among the Byzantines, dates since about 
the seventh century. Since then, Greeks have always used this silent, rough breathing mark in writing. So, just because this symbol is placed over a vowel, it does not mean that it is pronounced like an H any more than the H in Spanish, ora, or in French, er, or in English, our honest. Ironically, the initial H of numerous English words from Greek is pronounced based on the notion that it represents the sound of the ancient Greek aspirate. And here are some examples. Haptic, helicopter, Hellenic, hemisphere, hemorrhoid, and so on. In contrast, the counterparts of these words in Greek are pronounced without aspiration. The reason for the H in these English loan words from Greek is that during the process of borrowing, lexicographers and responsible scholars were misguided by the erroneous Erasmian concepts regarding the function of the aspirate in classical Attic. 